The men so tense. Some time ago, I believe, I had the pleasure of telling you the story, venture which happened to a friend of mine, by the name of Den Insomni. During the visit of the objects of art for the museum at Cambridge, he did not publish his experiences very wildly on his return to England, but they could not fail to become known in England. Soon, many of his friends, and others, and gentlemen, who at the time presided over an art museum at another university, it had been expected that the story should make a considerable impression on the mind of a man whose location lay in line similar to Dennis Thomas, and he should be eager to catch an explanation of the matter which tended to make it seem improbable he should ever be called upon to deal with so agitating an emergency. Do you somewhat console to him to reflect that he was not expected to acquire an ancient MSS for his institution? That was the business of the Selburnian Library. The authorities at that institution might, if they please, ransack obscure corners of the continent for such matters. He was glad to be blind in a moment to confine his attention to enlarging the already unsuppressed collection of the English topographical drawings and engravings possessed by his museum. As it turned out, even the department, so homely and familiar, as this may have its dark corners. One of these, Mr. Williams, was especially introduced. Those who had taken even the most limited interest in the of the topographical pictures are where there is one London dealer whose aid is indispensable to their researches, Mr. J. W. Brittle, Law. Oh, this is a short interview, very minor catalogues, a large and constantly changing stock of brain plans, or sketches of mansions, churches, and towns in England and Wales. The catalogues were, of course, a missing as subject of Mr. Williams. But as, as his museum already contained an almost accumulation of so prographical pictures, it's a regular rather than a capricious flyer. He rather looked to Mr. Bitnell to fill up and get some rent and work on his collection then to supply him with rarities. Then in February last year, there appeared upon Mr. Williams' desk a museum of catalogue of Mr. Bitnell's emporium and company it was a slight written communication to the dealer himself. This letter ran as follows. Dear sir, I beg your attention to number seven nine seven eight in our company catalogue, which we shall be glad to send an approval. The last faithfully J. W. Britton on. To turn to number nine seven eight in our company catalogue was with Mr. Williams as he observed himself. The welcome of moment and the place indicated that we found the following entry nine seven eight unknown interesting measurement states so it's like tint view of a man a house early part of the century fifteen by ten inches black frame two pound two shillings not sufficiently exciting the price seemed high it was mr nail who knew his business as custard seemed to set store by Mr. Williams wrote a postcard asking the article to accept approval along with some other ravings and sketches which appeared in the same catalogue. So he passed without much excitement on the conversation to the only labours of the man. Possibly any kind of always arise a day later than you expect it. That of Mr. Bennell it proved, as I believe the right phrase goes, no exception to the rule. Delivered at the museum in the afternoon post on Saturday, Saturday, as a Mr. Williams had left his work, he was accordingly brought round to his rooms in the college of our day attendance, in order that he might not have to wait on over Sunday for looking for it to return such of the contents as he did not propose to keep. And here he found it when he came to tea with a friend. The only item which I concerned was a rather large black frame Minzo tent, of which I have already quoted the short description given in Mr. Bernal's catalogue.
the lock. So more details of it will have to be given, though. I cannot hope to put this before you. The look of the picture is clearly as it is present to my own eyes. There is an alien. Is that difficult of it? may be seen in many good old in our parlors of the passages of the country mansions, present moments. It was a rather indifferent means of tint, indifferent means of tint, as perhaps the worst form of engraving known. It presented a full face view of a not very large manor house of the last century. With three rows of plain slash windows with rusticated masonry about them, a pamphlet of the balls of vases at the end of angles and a small portico in the centre. The other side were trees in the front of considerable spats of lawn. Legend A.W. Scapacit was agreed on a narrow margin. There was no further inscription. I often gave the impression that it was the work of an amateur. When the world of Mr. Vanell could mean by its fixing the price of two pounds to sit in such a subject, was more than Mr. Williams could imagine. He turned it over with a good deal of contempt. Upon the back was a paper label, left hand half which had been torn off. All that remained of the letters, two lines in writing. The first uh, and the first had letters equally in hall, second Ishiak. It would perhaps be worthwhile to identify a place represented which we which he could easily do with the help of a visitor. Then he would send it back to Mr. Vanell for some remarks reflected upon the judgment of that gentleman. He lighted the candles, for it was now dark, made a tea, and supplied up the friend with food in plain golf. I believe the authorities of the University like to indulge in a pursuit by way of relaxation. The tea was taken in compliment of a discussion which golfing persons could imagine for themselves, which a conscientious writer has no right to inflict upon any golfing persons. The conclusion of right was that certain strokes might have been better, as in certain emergencies, neither player had an experience that amount of luck, which a human being has a right to expect. He now had that frame. Let's call him Professor Blinks. So I got a frame of engraving and said, What is this place, William? What, just what I'm going to try to find out, said Williams, going to shuffle with the Gazetta. Look at the back, something common, either in Sussex or Essex. Half the name's gone, you see. Don't happen to know it, I suppose. It's from the man Brunel, I suppose, isn't it, said Brinks? Is it for the museum? I think I should buy it. It's a price with five shillings, said Williams. But for some unearthly reason, he wants two guineas for it. I can't also see why it's wretched a greening as even any figures could give it its life. Not worth two guineas, I should think, said Blinks. But I don't think it's so badly done. The moonlight like, seems rather good to me. I should have thought there were figures, or at the least a figure, um, figure just on the edge of the front. Let's look, said Williams. Well, it's true that it might be rather cleverly given. Where's the uh, figure? Oh, yes. So his head in the very front of the picture. There, there was a, there it was, hardly more than a black blot on the extreme edge of the engraving. Head of a man or woman, good deal muffled up and back turned to the spectator, looking towards the house. Williams had not noticed it before. Dill, he said, it's a third cleverer thing, and I thought I can't spend two guineas of the museum money, a picture of a place I don't know. Professor Binks had his work to do, and soon went, very nearly up to the whole time, Williams was gazing in the vain attempt to identify the subject, the picture, if the veil before the room had been only been lit. It would have been easier than that, he thought, but as I am, may, may be anything from destiny to Mangalore, there are many more names ending like this. I thought in this rubber book of no index of terminations. Calling Mr. Williams Keldish was at seven. It need not be dwelled upon. At least so he met the, their colleagues in playing golf during the afternoon, both of which he had been had no concern 
and freely bound his cross of pain, merely engulfing words, I would hasten to explain. I suppose an hour or more had been spent in what was called common room after dinner. Late in the evening, some of three retired to William's rooms, had a little doubt that whilst whist were played and at the first moment, during the long of these operations, William picked up the letters of the tent at the table without looking at it, and it's a person mildly interested in the dark, telling him where it came from, the other vitacles which he already, we already know. So then took it carefully, looked at it, then said in a tone of some interest, Really, it's a very good piece of work, Williams. It's quite a pretty romantic piece. That is Avery from Williams. It seems, seems to me the figure, though he's rather too grotesque, is it's somehow very impressive. Yes, it is, isn't it? said Williams, who was just then busy giving whiskey and soda to others in the of the company, able to come across the room to look at the view again. If by this time later, late in the evening, the witnesses were on the move, after they met, went, Williams was obliged to write a letter or two and clear out some odd bits of work. At last came some time past midnight, supposed to turn in, put in his added lamp after lighting the bedroom candle, picked what lay placed upwards on the table. The last man looked at it, had put it, caught his eye as he turned the lamp down. What he saw made him very he drop the candle on the floor. It flares now. If he had been left in the dark at that moment, he would have had to be sick. But as that did not happen, be able to put down the light on the table, take a good look at the pictures, it is undutably, but absolutely impossible, no doubt, but absolutely certain. Mill alone in front of the unknown house, the figure, where the figure had been at five o'clock that afternoon, is calling on all fours towards the house. He is muffled in a strange black garment, a white cross on the back. I don't know what it is the idea, of course, to pursue a situation this kind. I can only tell you what Mr. Williams did. He took the picture by one corner and carried it across the passage to set a set of rooms which he possessed. There he locked it up in a drawer, spotted the doors of both sets of rooms, beside the bed. But at first he wrote out and signed an account of the extraordinary change which Richard had undergone since he'd come into his possession. His sleep was looking rather late. This is consoling to reflect the behaviour of the picture did not depend on his own unsupported testimony. Evidently the man who had looked at it right before seeing something but the same, kinds he had otherwise, he might have been tempted to think. Something gravely wrong was happening, even to his eyes or his mind. Possibility being fortunately concluded, two matters awaited him on the morrow. He took stock of the picture very carefully, and called in a witness that for this purpose he might make a determined effort to ascertain what house it was that it that was represented. He took therefore he would therefore ask his name over the desperate, breakfast him. He would conceptually spend the morning over the Gazetta. And if it was disarranged, around right, about 9.30, his host was quite, not quite dressed. I'm sorry to say, even this late hour during breakfast, nothing was said about the mint, but tint by Williams. So they had a picture which he I wished and have its opinion. Uh, those who are familiar with the universe tonight, can picture for themselves a wide and delightful range of subjects over which conversation two fellows of Canterbury College who like to stay during a Sunday morning breakfast. Are they topics of left gun challenge from golf to lawn tennis? Yet I'm bound to say that Williams was rather short. You know, for his interest in action centre, and that very strange picture was now reposing face downwards in a drawer in his room opposite. The morning pipe was laughed. Lighted. The moment had arrived for which I looked a very considerable, almost a tremendous excitement. Ran across the unlocked door, extracting the pivot to steel, face down, was ran back, and put it in Edward's hand. Now, he said, Edward, I want you to tell me exactly what you see in that picture. Describe it. It doesn't matter rather, rather minutely. I'll tell you why I asked you. Well, said Edward, I uh, have here a view of a country house. English. I was in my moonlight, moonlight. 
You sure of that? Certainly a moment appears to be on the brain. If you wish to for details, there are clouds in the sky. I go on, I swear, said William. And aside, there were no moon, but I saw it first. Well, there is not much here more to say. He said, there's a bit of a house. There's two rows of windows, five in each row, set to the bottom, which there's a porch instead of a middle one. And what about the figures, said William, with marked interest? There aren't any, said William, but what? No figures in the grass in front. Not a thing, you swear to that? Certainly I will, but there's. There is just one other thing. What? Why one of the windows of the ground floor, left of the door, door is open? Really? Is it really so? My goodness, you must have got in, said Williams with great excitement. He hurried to the back of the circle, which led to the sitting. I catch the picture from him, verified the matter for himself. It's quite true, there was no figure. There were, and there was the open window. Williams, moment speechless surprise. Went to write and it was scribbled for a short time. He bought two papers for a note I asked him to write first to write sign one. His own description of the picture, which had just heard. Write the other, which was William's statement, written the night before. What can, can it all mean? said Nesbitt. Exactly, said William. Well, one thing I must do, or three things, now to think of it, I must find out from Goldwood. That this was his last night, night visitor. It's what he saw, and when then I show, then I must set the thing, get the thing photographed before it goes further. I must find out what the, that place is. I can do the photographing myself, said that bit. I, and I will. But you know, it looks very much as if we're sitting and working out of the treasure somewhere. And the question is, has it had a hand of what it is, or is it going to come off? You must find out what the place is. Yes, he said, looking at the picture again. I bet you're right. Rick has got in. And if they don't, if they don't mistake, there'll be the devil to pay for one of the rooms upstairs. I'll tell you what, said Williams. I'll take the picture across to the old green. This is a senior fellow of the college uh, who'd been the bursar for many years. It quite likely he knew it. He knew it. He may have the property of the Essex and Sussex. He must have been over there. The two counties a lot in his time. Quite likely he will, said the next bit. But just let me take my photograph first. Uh, look here. If rather think Green is it up today, it wasn't at all last night. I think I heard him say he's going down for Sunday. That's true too, Sir Williams. I know he's gone to Brighton well. You have to you photograph it now. I'll go across the Grovewood and get this statement and you'll keep an eye on it while I'm gone. Again, you think two guineas is not a very exorbitant price for it now. In a short time, when he returned and brought Mr. Goldberg with him, Goldberg's statement was the fact that the figure, which had he had only seen, so clear on the edge of the picture, was not far across the lawn. He remembered the white mark on the lawn. He remembered the white mark on the back of the safety. I could not have been sure what it was across. The dot went to this effect. Has been drawn up and signed. And they've been seen in the photograph of the picture. What do you mean to do? He said. Are you going to sit and watch it all day? Well, I think not, said Williams. I rather imagine we meant to see the whole thing. You see, between the time I saw it last night, this morning, there was time for lots of things to happen. But the creature only got into the house. If it could easily have got through his business and time and time, his own place again, but the fact that the window being open, I am quite easy without leaving it. And besides, I have no kind of idea. It doesn't make, it won't change much if it, at all in the daytime. He must go out for a walk this afternoon and come in to tea or whatever it gets dark. I shall leave it out on the table here. I spoke the door. My skip could get in, but no one else. The three agreed that this would be a good plan. And further, if they spent the afternoon together, it'd be less likely to talk about a business to have a vehicle. For any rumour of such transaction, as all as it was going up, going on, would bring a whole the power a metacological society. But it is. We may give them a respite till five o'clock. At or near the hour, free entering the staircase. 
Well, at first, slightly annoying. The authorities the Romans were unsupported. At the moment, it was remembered that on Sunday, the scouts gave orders in an old hour or so earlier than the week days. I was surprised to wait them. First thing they saw was a picture leaning up against a pile of books on the table that had been left. The next thing was William Skip seated on a chair opposite, gazing at it with a distinguished horror. How was this, Mr. Fincher? A name is not of uh, not of my own invention, but so a considerable standing set the standard of etiquette. But to all his own college and several neighbouring ones, nothing could be more alienated in practice. He found sitting in his carpet chair, appearing to take a bed, took the notice of his master furniture, or pitch his lead, it seemed to feel. This himself had done it violently when the three men were in the room. I got up with a marked effort and he said, Ask your father, sir, for not taking such a freedom to be and sit down. Not at all, Robert, replied the Williams. I didn't mean to ask you for some time once you thought of that picture. Well, sir, of course it didn't affect my opinion of it again, yours. I ain't the picture. I ain't ready. Where's my girl? Where's my little girl? We could see it, sir. Wouldn't you, Robert? Why not? No, sir. Why the poor child? But once you see the poor Bible, this picture's not off. That is, we had to set up with a three or four nights afterwards. If believe me, it was a, if it was like the catch a sight this person here, or whatever he's carrying off the poor baby, he, he she would be in the thinking. You know how it is with children, how nervous they get. He, the little thin little white picture of me laying about, sir. We're not where anyone has that, that label to be scold. You come on into it. Should you be waiting? What do you think this evening, sir? Thank you, sir. And these words of excellent men. Man went to the continuum of round and asked his masters, you may be sure that gentlemen have only lost, lost no time in the house. And before, under the waning room, a drifting clowns. The window had been open was shut. The figures once on the lawn, but not this time calling cautiously, hands and knees. Now the wreck is standing swift, stepping swiftly with long strides toward the front of the picture. The moon was behind it, a dark drapery, black drapery hung down over its face. I think it could be seen what well, was a visible maid and such is profoundly thankful. They could see no more white dome like forehead. A few spun when head was bent down, the arms were tightly grasped of a, a, a shell. The chimney, the head was bent down, the arms were tightly grasped of an object which could be dimly seen that was a child, whether dead or living, it's not possible to say. Legs of pins alone could be plainly discerned. They were purely, horribly thin. A five to seven, three companions that. What's the picture by turn? But never change, they agreed at last. It would be safe to leave it. But they would return on the whole. Three further developments. When they assembled again at the earliest possible moment, very moon was there, but the thing was gone. The house was quiet under the moonbeams. There was nothing for it but to spend our evening over gazettes and work, go, guidebooks. Williams was lucky one at that last. Perhaps he deserved it. 11.30 p.m. You bed for the burial is going. The rest is the following lines. 16 miles of Emily. The church had been on an interesting building in Norman Dane. It was essentially crucified the first as our century. It contains the tomb of family, Francis, whose manor and a girl hall and solid queen hands found down to meet the beloved of Pellet Park about 80 acres. Family now is steep. The last day ever having disappeared mysteriously in the infancy of the year 1802. Her father, Mr. Arthur, with Francis, looking known as Timothy Emma to Gregory, the Mr. Tote, since he stood on his appearance. He rung the toilet in the complete front of the hall, was found dead in the studio, third anniversary disaster, having just completed the green of the house, pressure to which there was various. Very considerable rate, I think. 
This looks like business and even Mr. Green. I turn at once and go to the house as Angley Hall. Is there any kind of explanation for the figures, Green? was the question which Williams had actually asked. I don't know, I'm sure, Williams. What well, used to be said in the place when I first knew it, which was before I came up here, it was just this, the old parts was always very much down to those voting folks. Whether he got a chance, he used to get a man who he suspected when he turned off the state. And by degrees, he got rid of them, all of them but one. Why I could do a lot of things they didn't, they didn't think of now. Well, this man had was left was what they find pretty often in that country. The last remains of a very old family. I believe they were laws and manner at one time. Reflection just as the main thing in her own parish. What? Like the man in trust of the Denver Vills? William Pop? Yes, I dare say, it's not a book I would ever read myself. This fellow could show a row with the church with him, uh, that belonged to his ancestors. All that went to sell him a bit. But Francis, they said, could never get a man in at him. The woman is kept at just the right sort of law until one night the keepers found him that it is as it, it, it would write as an end of state. I can show you the pits now. It marches from some land. It used to belong to the uncle, Roy. You can imagine there was a row around this man, Goldie. That was the name, to be sure, Goldie. I thought I could get it, Goldie. He was unlucky enough to poor chap. He shot the keeper. Well, that was what Francis wanted to grand jury. You know, Goldie, he struck up in a double quick time. I have been shown the place he's buried in. There's also the church. You know, the way in the part of the world. Anyone's been hanged to make away from themselves. They buried him that story. The idea and the, about and the idea was that some friend of Gordy's a relation because he'd gone poor devil. But he was the last nut of his current line, kind of species out from Vingius, which have planned to get hold of Francis Boy. And put an end to his line too, I don't know. Rather worth the way he's been when he's his coach is a thing off. They used no I should say. Now it looks more like it's old verity and managed the job himself. Boof I had a hate to think of it. I was hate to think of it. But I have some whiskey, Williams. The facts are committed by Williams of Denderson. By him to mix company of which I one of Sir Cody and professors of morphology or other. It's so to say that Laffer been asked what he what he thought of it. Only he remarks of those very big people that say anything, a sentiment which met with objection deserved. If I had only to add that the picture is now in the Astley Museum, they have been treated with a view discovering some of the sympathetic ink he used in it. Brown's effect. That's Mr. Vanell in nothing of its safe of its safe. What what he It was safe and it wasn't sure. There's no need to add that picture down there as a museum with three review discovering of the sympathetic ink he used in it. Brown's effect. And Mr. Vanell knew nothing of it. It was safe. I was sure it was uncommon. And that, though carefully watched, it had never been known to kill an again.